All right, open your Bibles for preaching tonight to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. By the way, if you didn't get the message this morning, you didn't hear the message this morning, um, I'm not sure, Robert, how soon can you have it up on the website? Okay. Um, if, you, if you didn't get it, we can, make you, we can get you copies this week. Uh, I'd like you to hear it. I'd like you to get it, please. Um, it's uh, something that I think that would be an encouragement, a challenge to you. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Tonight we're going to be speaking on functioning in the body of Christ. Functioning in the body of Christ. Verse 1 says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were, you're, we, you were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Now the word dumb there is not referring to, it's not in the modern vernacular like we would use it. Okay? It's talking about idols that cannot talk. Okay? And so they, they, that's what they worshipped. They worshipped a stone or a silver or a gold idol that could do nothing for them. They were gods that couldn't see, couldn't hear, couldn't speak, couldn't touch, could do nothing. And so he's saying, you were, you were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols. He's writing to the Corinthians. And he says, wherefore I, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there, were, there was a group of priestesses back in this time, and this is where all this uh, tongues movement, the tongues movement of today, it's not new. It's all, it's, it was back in Bible times. And there, was the, there, were the, there, there was a group of priestesses in a false religion who used to roll, you know, roll back their eyes and, and go off into a trance and would mumble. And it was demonic. And the Corinthians were enamored by this. And so, but yet they didn't believe Jesus was God. And so he's saying that somebody who doesn't believe that Jesus is God and who curses him is not spiritual. Okay? They're not going to speak what, they are not of God like you think they are. And so he then continues in verse Number two, he says, ye, or three, he says, Wherefore I, I give to you to understand. Now that word understand in chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 14, chapter 15, actually beginning in chapter 11 all the way to the end of the book, the word understanding or understand in 1 Corinthians is a very pivotal word because God is not the author of confusion. God wants us to understand. He wants us to know. And so, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, remember that particular word. Verse 4, he writes, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. That means that in the work of God, in the, the, the ministry, in the, the body of Christ, there are people of all walks of life who have different gifts and talents that they can use for God. And we're, and, and we're not... I want you to understand that tonight, my focus and my purpose is not that you can find out what your spiritual gift is, although you probably would be good to do that. And a spiritual gift is something that can be used in the ministry. It is not for self-edification. Let me say that again. A spiritual gift is to be used in the ministry. It is not for self-edification. And that's what the tongues movement has become. It is to glorify self and to say, hey, look at me, I can speak in a different language and it's a heavenly language, so-called. And that's not at all what the gifts are for. It is to be used in the work of God for the winning of souls and the propagation of the gospel throughout the world. Period. That's it. And if it's used for any other thing, then it's not of God. Amen, pastor, amen. Verse 4 says there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And if you go to Romans chapter 12, we'll not turn there right now, but we'll go there just a bit. In Romans chapter 12, the Bible says that God gives those gifts severally as he will. So some people have more than one gift. Some, some people have an ability to do a lot of things, and God has given them that ability to be used again in the body of Christ, in the ministry. Verse 5, 
And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. Uh, it, it, in case you haven't been in church long enough to find out or to understand, every church does things different. There are all kinds of administrations. There's nothing wrong with administration. Administration is just the way that things are structured, the way that they are organized. And I believe very, very strongly in the structure of business-like ministry. We, we have a structure of a service. We have a way that we count money. We have a confidentiality, amen, in counting that money. We have check and balance as we count the money. And we, we have accountability as we count the money. That's just one thing. We have, we have policies, administration, of how we do the nursery. We have policies of how we do Sunday school. We have policies about every kind of thing. And, and we will have more as we grow. And there's nothing wrong with that. There are a lot of people, oh, I don't want rules. Well, you, you know, I mean, grow up. Okay? Because every part of life is full of rules. You have rules at work. They tell you when to be there, when to go home, how long you're going to stay, even if you don't want to stay, and what you do while you're there. So if you're, if you're looking for a place where there is, are no rules or there's no administration, then just find a hole that you can crawl, crawl into and die. Okay? Because you're not going to get away from it. You're not going to get away from it as, a, as teenagers. You're not going to get away from it at home. You're not going to get away from it at school. You're not going to get away from it when you get out of the house that you so desperately think that you need to do right now. And when you get out of the house, you know, this is the most silly statement that any young person can make. When I get out of the house, I'm going to join the service and I'm going to do whatever I want to do. <laughs> you just wait, okay? Life is full of administration, and so it's important that we have an administration, and we have a structure here. We do certain things a certain way. We use the committee system. We have other kinds of things that we do in, those, in the administration of our church. Some churches do not use that. Number six, verse six, and there are diversities of operations. There are different methods for doing things, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. You know, every local church, God has given autonomy. Now, as Baptists, if you don't know what autonomy is, that means every local church runs their own affairs. And they are accountable as a congregation under the direction of a pastor to God. We are not, as Baptists, and even as Southern Baptists, we are not under a hierarchy that is dictating to us from a big palace in, in Rome. We're not underneath any other kind of organization that is going to tell us how to do things and is going to intrude in this ministry. We believe in the local church as Baptist. Amen. So what, what happens then is that we as a congregation, we, we have a constitution, we have a way of doing things, and we operate a certain way. And because we do something some way, that doesn't mean another ministry is a bad ministry because they do something a different way. Operations. Different strokes for different folks. It's okay. It says, but the same God. Verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So, we want the Spirit of God to be manifest in our ministry. Anybody that doesn't want the, the Holy Spirit in their church, uh, I, I, I've heard of pastors that, that play down the ministry of the Holy Spirit in ministry today. That's a dangerous position to take. Now, hey, I'm not, I'm not Pentecostal, and, by, and, I'm, and I'm not involved in, 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 in believing in a lot of things that go in the direction of emotionalism and fantasy, and things that are not biblical. But, I'm not afraid of the Holy Ghost. I ask the Holy Spirit to be upon me. I want, I want to know, as I said tonight, as I was, all is vain unless the Spirit of the Holy One come down. If God the Holy Spirit 
isn't empowering the preaching, then let's just close the book and let's go home and let's go, get, go have ice cream. By the way, every teenager, I want you to hear me tonight, my wife and I, we're going to go over to Dairy Queen, and any of you that would like, now your parents got to buy their own, but I'll, I'll, get, I'm gonna get, I'll get you ice cream. And any boy and girl that's here tonight, you come over there, you're going to have ice cream tonight. You say, preacher, what are you bribing them for Sunday night? Absolutely. <laughs> you, 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 you think I'm kidding? I want young people to know that the place to be any time is the house of God. You know what they're going to do when they go home. They're going to watch TV or they're going to watch, do something else. They're, they're not going to be, they're going to be fooling around, but you know, to have them in God's house and to hear the, have them listening to the preaching and have them serving the Lord, that's a big deal. And so, <clears throat> anyway, so that, that was for free. So that, well, I got their attention finally. Finally heard the first thing that's this is receiving in the message. <clears throat> Verse 9, to another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit. Verse 8, for to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit. To another the working of miracles, verse 10. To another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues, and note the expression tongues. Now here's, now, now listen to me, because you need, a, it's very significant the, the, the way you look at the words that God uses in the Bible. It says tongues. The impression that is given by people in the tongues movement is that there is a heavenly language and that that is the tongue to speak. You, you find that in that, those texts. It's not there. The word tongues, 33 out of 34 times in the Bible, means foreign language. Look it up. It doesn't talk about any kind of babbling. It doesn't talk about anything that's confusing. It is communicating in languages that people can understand and hear the gospel and they can get saved. That is what happened in Acts chapter 2. There were all kinds of people, a multitude, tens of thousands of people, and of those, 3,000 who heard the gospel in their own language wherein they were born. That is what was said about those at Pentecost responded to the gospel, and the result was 3,000 people got saved. You don't think God was excited about that, and if you don't understand the emphasis of that and the, and the reasoning behind that, then you need to look at the Bible a little closer. People getting saved is what God is all about. So, verse 11 says, But all these, all these different gifts, worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Now, if you recognize what God just said there, then it will keep you from getting the big head and thinking you're somebody special because you have a certain gift. Whatever gift you have comes from God. Amen. Amen. And you are nothing without God. So understand the importance of the fact that you have a gift. Hey, first of all, you ought to be thankful that you even have the ability to be used of God. And that God has chosen you to be able to do something for Him. What a privilege. What an opportunity to be able to serve the King of Kings, to do anything, however big or however small, in the work of God. And then when you understand that and that it's, it, it, he's, he's given it to you, you understand then that privilege and that awesome responsibility to use it and not abuse it. And to recognize where it comes from. Who is the source of it and why you have it. 
Now, beginning in verse 12, Paul talks about the function within the body of Christ. And he uses the illustration of the body because we all have one. If you didn't have one, you wouldn't be here. I'm, you know, if, if, you, if, if there were people that were here, that were, I, I have, I, there are people that will make this statement. Well, pastor, I'll just be there in spirit. I, I tell them, you just keep your spirits at home. I want you here physically. I don't, I don't want a bunch of spooks floating around in the auditorium. When you're, when you're well, or when you're able to be here, then you come here bodily, but don't be coming here in spirit. No. Uh-uh. We all have a body that we can see, we can touch, we can feel. God has given us that to function. And if, you, if you've seen your body, and you probably do on a regular basis, you know that it has a multiplicity of parts. I mean, it's just, it, there'd be no time to go through every single, every single part and function of everything. And that's, again, not my intention tonight. My intention is to help you to understand that we are to function a certain way. That the body of Christ is to be going in a, in a certain direction. Do you, do you understand, how, how many, now, maybe some of you here, I'm not, I, I don't, I don't want to step on anybody's feelings.